Poundland's 4 ampere USB power banks, the old and the new. The old one has some advantages, the new one has some advantages. The old one was rather sparse in its ratings. For a 4 ampere unit, it was close to about 3 ampere. It seems to contain, well, it does contain three 18650s, and they're, shall we say, around about 1 ampere each. It does, however, have two redeeming features. It's got a battery level indicator and it's got a little LED light in the front, but it also puts out 5 volts all the time. So even when it's gone to sleep and this little indicator goes off, it continues to put 5 volts out and it will do so right to the end until it cuts off in the internal sort of battery limit. But it will actually flash this light uh, when it's, it's woken up by loads increasing, like say, for instance, I've been using it to drive a Doppler activated string of lights. But the battery capacity has progressively dropped over time, as happens with lithium cells. The new one contains a big, fat 4 ampere cell, and it does test, test out at 4 ampere. It also, well, I'll load this up and show you. Let's zoom down now. I'll so set it over here. I shall plug in a, actually, I'll just shove that out of the way. I shall plug in a USB load. and show you that it sustains a 2 amp hour load continuously but the voltage starts falling off round about, let me just wind this up here started to drop off, uh, it's holding, it's holding I think it's about 2 point, hold on let me think, it's 2.5 amp hour, let's just run right up to 2.5 amp hour it's holding 4.91 volts, 9.2, uh, 2.5, so it's rock set steady at that, but as soon as you go beyond that, the voltage starts to drop. You can see the voltage dropping there, and uh, when it gets up to about 2.7, it will cut out. Let's just keep winding this up. 2.71, 2.72, 2 2.7, and it's cut out. So it's not bad. It does have two outputs, and it says dual 2 amp output. What it actually means is like 2 amp for the whole lot, as these things usually do. Let me show you how you open this, and then we'll try and get this out. I'm going to take the circuit board out and we'll check it out as well. These, uh, this is the Rudeng uh, USB meter, and this is just a generic little eBay tester. This one's quite nice because it allows find it. Instead of having the coarse and fine, this one just has one multi-turn uh, trimmer on it for actually setting the current, which is quite useful. I shall pop that up there, out the way. I have marked this so you know how to open it. So you open it from the other side, from the text, this side. And if I zoom down this, you'll see I've marked measurements. The lines at the end indicate these little clips that are pretty much just either side of each one of the sockets here. The other ones are a little grip, and it does grip quite tightly. It's got a little tooth at the back of it. And uh, the measurements are the from that end with the text facing down from the USB socket end, 35 millimeter, 60, 83, 90 in from each end, and then 27 millimeter, 55 millimeter, 83 millimeter. To get this open, you really have to, it depends. One of them came apart easily. One of them did not come apart easily. Uh, this one came apart easily, but you push the screwdriver, the, the spudger, should I say, and really it, go, it hits us at a ledge first, but then you push it a bit further and then down, and then you can actually lever it up. Just be careful when you do it, because I would recommend discharging the battery completely before you do that. Not much to see in the circuit board, but that's only because we haven't taken it out yet. Let's use isopropanol. Someone said you should, you know, should use a uh, petrol for this, and I was a bit skeptical about that. Uh, in reality, the only things that are going to get the, the glue to dissolve are uh, flammable solvents. So here goes the isopropanol. I'm going to squirt some isopropanol in and just slush it around to try and dissolve the pad in the back of this battery, and we'll see if it comes out. It might not. I can see from the end that it is one of those little black foam pads. Now I shall tentatively, this is where plastic would be quite useful, and I do recommend making sure the battery is discharged. You know what? Let's let it soak a little bit more. Shall we get a little bit more isopropanol in? This is where it arcs and flashes and then the whole lot goes up in flames. You wish. 
Okay. Right, well that's not reassuring. I don't want to use too much force because, yeah, levering these cells out, you can easily damage them. So I shall lever it up a little bit, and then I shall pop more isopropanol, flood more isopropanol down into it. So it sort of seeps between the layers. Tell you what else I'll do. I'll unscrew these two screws so the whole lot comes out. This seems like a logical thing to do. Oh, not putting the screw onto the circuit board though. This uh, cell instantly is not discharged. I can hear the glue giving out of that, or the, the battery is sizzling. It's like diffusing a bomb. Oh, it's coming off quite cleanly. That's nice. Oh, there we go. And it's left the pad. It's come off fairly cleanly, a slight ripple in the layer, but the layer has not been punctured, which is important. If you do puncture the foil thing, then I recommend discharging the battery and getting rid of it, because uh, once you've punctured it, the electrolyte's going to sort of leak out. It's going to vent over time. If you damage it and it starts getting hot, as always, just throw it in a metal container and get it out side as quickly as possible. Let's take this little thing off. What is the circuit board revealing? The circuit board is revealing a little 8-pin chip, but it's a dedicated uh, switch with 8-pin chip. That is an interest component there. What is that? Oh, I'm guessing that is probably it's next to the negative connection. I'm guessing this might be a hybrid uh, DW01 style battery protection chip, right? Tell you what, I'm going to get this circuit board off. Uh, and then we can take a closer look at it. The reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. It's not too bad. I shall zoom up in this to get as much in shot as possible within the reason. It's all based around an IP5306 chip. If you look at the back of the circuit board, you can see that that chip is here, because I flipped this image around and it's got plated through holes, coupling it thermally onto a large ground plane. The ground plane is also used to secure the uh, connectors. It's pretty solid. Um, the only point the ground plane breaks is when it comes to the battery, there is a protection circuit here for the battery. If I bring in the data sheet for that, it is a XB7608A. Basically, it combines the MOSFETs and the voltage protection of the DW01 into one chip and it only has three connections although there's actually five connections on the chip two of them are doubled up vm is doubled up and it's this main negative uh, ground is doubled up and it goes to the negative of the battery and vdd is used to sense the voltage across the battery so to analyze that bit of circuitry here is that chip here the two big pads are going to the general mass the general sort of ground everything these two pads here are going to the battery, and then there's a little divider network here, a 1K resistor and a capacitor that just filters from the positive supply over here, which actually comes from this battery terminal along this track and then ducks under here. And it uh, just provides a voltage threshold in the battery, and that chip then does all the protection. It cuts it off if the battery goes too low, and also cuts it off if the battery voltage goes too high. Very straightforward. This chip, though, is interesting. It's a very capable chip. The incoming supply for charging comes in the USB-C connector. The USB-C connector, the other chips can actually communicate with it, but they're not actually using that in this particular version. And this doesn't have facility to do so. So the only other connections other than the negative at either side, which are mirrored because the USB-C connector can be put in either way around, we've got the two negatives either side and the stakes through the circuit board, plus we've got the two incoming in orange here supply plus we've got two green pins which i it's very hard seeing because they're so tiny but i probed and i think they're the ones next to the positive from the usb and they are pulled to ground via a 5.1k resistor that must just be something in the usb standard just to say you know put power out the incoming five volts from the usb in goes through this circuitry here there's a capacitor to the negative rail and there's a one ohm resistor and capacitor a little snubber network purely for filtering and then it goes to pin one of the chip the chip 
to boost the voltage up and potentially to regulate the charging because it appears that it may actually use this inductor for charging the battery as well that's going to result in much more efficient operation uh, temperature wise when uh, when it was charging this chip went up to 56 degrees celsius which isn't bad given it was charging about two amps um, when it switches though into uh, output mode and it uses this inductor again it switches the inductor via this uh, pin 7 uh, and then senses the voltage coming back from the battery as it boosts it up via the purple marks here. Now, there is a variation from the circuit diagram here. If we look at the schematic for this chip, it shows a resistor there being used as a sort of filter from between the battery and the uh, input for stability. They've not included that, but they have included those two uh, capacitors. And also in the output, they have included these three capacitors here. I shall show you those. These three capacitors here are just in parallel. Because the, I normally mark negative with blue, but because it's a blue background, I've just put a blue dot. So wherever you see a blue dot, that's the negative, common negative rail. And they've got the, the cluster of three capacitors here, uh, which are connecting to the positive outputs of these which are common together uh, and that's boosting the voltage up from the battery positive via the inductor to actually provide a stable 5 volt supply at the output of those. Normally with these battery packs you have one pair common together and these ones are just common together a little shunt and that just basically when you plug something into that it says it's a charger. Usually you can have a for iPhones when they're fussy about that it just depends which era of phone it is but you can you've got the option here for uh, as in the schematic the actual manufacturer's data sheet it's got the options for loads of resistor arrays and a transistor for some reason not sure what that is but in this instance they've brought those two tracks down to that circuitry here and then they've just put a link across it so they're just basically both are linked they're both just dumb this is a charger type port what else is there to say about this? Let's take a look at the schematic. Other things, there's the LEDs and the switch. Um, and uh, there's a 1K resistor in series, the switch, and a 100 ohm resistor in series, the LEDs. This is the wrong picture. This is the right picture. This chip has the facility to have one of these little, you know, these little... Um, uh, Wait, this is this. I think this has gone to sleep. Mm -hmm. There it goes. Uh, the little LED in the front. Mm -hmm. uh, let's double click that one. Some are double click, some are just long click. The key output can either go, well, it goes to the button, and but you don't need to use this. And in this instance, they've not used that. So this is a 1K resistor. But uh, if they wanted the reason it's a 1k resistor because of the led that pin is used just not only as a button pin but it's also used in output to the led this i mean sort of like flashlight led torch led and there's a resistor option for a resistor and sears that led and if they push the button while that was powered it would effectively short that out so there's a resistor and sears with the button there's also in this case they were using three to three pins to control the leds but they've put a 100 ohm resistor in here just to tame the intensity down, which is reasonable enough. But by using uh, tri-state multiplexing, they're allowing the switching of these LEDs. They can control the four LEDs basically from just three pins. Potentially they could control more LEDs from three pins. Technically speaking, they could control six, but in this instance, they've... Is that right? No, it's not, is it? That is more or less... No, they could have actually, if the, if it was true tri-state multiplexing, they could also have a pair of LEDs between there, but they don't need that. It's just driving four LEDs. Uh, that is more or less it. There's the uh, incoming supply with the capacitor cross and then the snubber network, the resistor and the capacitor. On the data sheet, they so show a different value of resistor, but I suppose ultimately it's just as it's, it's a low value of resistor. It's just a sort of filter network. Things worthy of note about the schematic, the unit in general. The old power bank 
If it was charging, the outputs turn off. This one doesn't. This one, if you are charging this unit, here's the empty case. If you're charging it um, from the USB-C and you were to power something, say Arduino or your little 5 volt circuit from it, it, it will actually put power out to that circuit. And then, you, so you can use it as a little uh, UPS, so that if the power fails, it will switch back to battery. And then when the power is restored again, it will charge the battery while also powering the circuit, but only at a low load. I measured the temperature of the chip. During output, at one amp load, it was 38 degrees Celsius. And then as a worst case scenario, I let the battery voltage go down to about just barely on the point of cutting out about three volts and uh, put a two a point one amp load in it and it went up to 90 degrees Celsius. But that's like the worst case. It's That's as hot as it's going to get. And it is at least dissipating that heat across the whole back of the circuit board. Although once it's in the plastic case, that does restrict the heat. So it will get a bit hotter. And the standard one micro Henry inductor. That is about it. There's not really much else to say. It's just standard chips. IP5306. Uh, and that other little chip, the protective chip for the battery, which is the XB7608A. This one also appears to protect against battery reversal, which I don't think the DW01 does. Not sure about that. But there we go. Uh, that's not bad. It does seem to check out as a 4 amp power cell in this. Where is the, the unit? Let me just grab it. It's charging at the moment. It does seem to check out, and it's labelled as a, a, a 4 amp hour cell. Where is the other battery? It's in a bag somewhere. I got two of them and uh, experimented. I have to say, one was easy to open, one was hard to open. Just be aware of this when you're, you're crowbarring in with your uh, tools. Make sure it's discharged first. Make sure once you've done it that the battery's not been damaged. Um, but it does appear to be a 4 amp hour cell, so it's useful for scavenging out. But note that it is not a drone grade cell it's only designed for low current ish loads like these with the drone cells there uh, they they'd have loads and loads of tabs in the positive it'd be loads of separate plates this is one sort of one single wound foil so it's not capable of super mega high currents for stuff like that but it's still a useful battery in its own uh, but to be honest uh, given the quality of this um and the fact it followed most of the schematic the manufacturer's recommended details I would say leave it as a charger because uh, it's pretty good for that. I mean, obviously, steal the battery out if you want. It's it's a cheap and easy way to get a battery off the shelf at short notice. Um, but anyway, as a charger, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think that gets pretty good marks.